Hi YouTube, it's Emma Blue Eyes 10 here and this is our response video to the Underground Members the video of Deck History and Respect and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, um, the Underground Members, uh, as you guys already probably know, is a group of original duelists who promote originality in deck building and such. And I've been with them for about a year now and I really enjoy the videos and everything. So if you haven't checked them out, go and check them out. Um, but anyway, very recently, uh, Kisami Unlimited, one of the leaders, posted up a video about his deck history and about a new deck that he was building. And um, he showed us that it was a meta deck, Light Swans, which was very interesting. And I thought, you know, good, good on you, you know, maybe we can actually turn meta decks into fun decks and such. Because um, I'm building my own Light Swan deck, uh, which I'll show you later in the video. But anyway, um, he was telling about how he got those cards, and when he got them, somebody had taken a pair of scissors to them. Yeah, somebody had taken a pair of scissors to these Light Swan cards and completely trashed them. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked and upset to see something like that. You know, I, ugh, oh, it was really horrible. I mean, these cards are all different rarities. I mean, most of them are shinies, as people call them, ultimates and stuff. And this guy had cut them up. And, um, but Kisami, um, sell tape them back together and he, and that's the reason why he decided to um, make the deck um, because you know he couldn't believe at the disrespect that had been shown to these cards. Now you could say it's my woman's side uh, kicking in with this but I find it absolutely disgusting that somebody would take a pair of scissors to the cards and tear them up so other people couldn't use them. Now the only reason and it may not be the reason the guy did it, did it, mind you. But the only reason I could think of, if you want to cut up and trash cards, if they're quite expensive in that keyword there, is the fact that they are expensive. You do, you know, he wouldn't want them t to get sold on for a lot of money because let's face it, light swan cards are still expensive no matter what rarity they are. But it, oh, God, it was just, it was horrible to see to see that, I mean, what utter disregard and utter disrespect, really, it's, it's pathetic, I mean, y if you trade them, you know, they're worth more, I think, well, it, in general, I think cards are worth more in trade than they are in money, in honest truth, because I trade for a lot of my cards now, I don't buy unless I absolutely have to, um, but anyway, um, this response video is just to show, um, what I do with cards that are banged up and everything and um, anyway let's go on with it shall we now as you all know I run Blue Eyes Dragons that's my main deck okay and I also have a fun deck in the shape of Rainbow Era uh, which is my Jesse Anderson tribute deck I also have Rainbow Dark Era uh, I keep promising to get duels with this up but I haven't been able to get any card sleeves and Dual Network's not really a good place to test at the moment, I feel, just for the moment. And I'm also building my own, as I said, I'm also building my own Light Swan deck, as you can see here. And, yeah, but it's going to take a while for this deck to get complete anyway. But it's not going to be a competitive Light Swan, it's just going to be a fun version, fun version, uh, for me. Yeah, but anyway, um, the Blue Eyes Dragons, at least, um, the, the deck, the cards that are in this deck, some of them are pretty old. I mean, I'm talking about way back when uh, I first started playing Yu-Gi-Oh, which was about 2003. And um, it might actually surprise a lot of you to hear this, but the very first deck I actually had was Dark Magician. And you can actually see here, this Dark Magician is in a bit of a banged up, well not banged up state, a bit, a bit of a scratch state I think would be a better word for it. But um, this is the original starter deck, Yugi one. But that was my very first deck. I never played Blue Eyes, not until 2004, when I went to see the movie with my little sister and her friends. And as you guys all know, the very first card I pulled was the Shining Dragon. And 
this shiny dragon is the movie version that I got at the thing and this is what inspired me to build blue eyes because in the movie I was amazed and intrigued by how beautiful and powerful and majestic it was in the movie. I mean it was only a one time thing mind you but it looked so amazing in the movie that I just had to go and build blue eyes. And so I did, I traded around for um, some blue eyes cards and as you can see, I can get them out, these cards aren't in very good condition either. Sorry if that's a bit too close. You can see there's sellotape on there, the edges are a bit um, flattened. Yeah, these three blue eyes cards are original starter deck Kaiba. And they're a little bit in banged up shape, but I've been using them ever since 2004. And I don't give a crap about what state they're in because they've been with me and they mean that much to me because they came from friends that I friends that I had uh, when I was living in Lanarkshire. Now, I have got newer versions of the Blue Eyes cards which I could use if I really wanted to, but I don't because unless these cards get completely destroyed, I will not swap them out because that's how much they mean to me. I mean, I know it's a I know it's a card game and everything and people are saying it's um you know, it's probably my woman's side that's coming out, but, you know, they mean a lot, and I wouldn't trade them out for anything, no matter what kind of rarity it was or what kind of art it was, you know, these were the first three I ever got, and then, and unless they get completely destroyed, then I am not going to swap them out. The same with the Shining Dragon, and, and also, of course, with Ultimate Dragon, this is the original Show and Jump version uh, that I got in 2006, I believe it was. And I have got other versions of the Blue Eyes, but I always use the Show and Jump one because it was the very first one I got. So, yeah. And it's the same with some of my other decks as well. I mean, for example, in, in the Rainbow Era deck, I run a tin version of Rainbow Dragon. But I got a Ghost Rare version, as you can see here, of um, the Egyptian Prodigy. But I choose not to use it. I mean, Ghost Rares are awesome. But I like to see the artwork on the card, you know? So that's the reason why I run the tin version, not the ghost rare version. You're probably thinking, you're an idiot for saying that, but it's true. I mean, ghost rares are awesome, but I prefer to see the card's art, if you ask me. <laughs> that's just me. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... There you go. As, as I said, there's very few duelists like Kisami, myself, and the other members of the KCP. We don't give a crap about how rare a card is or how good a card is. If it does the job we want it to do for the deck, then that's when we will use it. We don't, um, you know, trade rare cards just to get other rare cards that are popular or hot right now. I mean, there are some cards that are standard staples that are in many different rarities, but as I said, we don't give a crap about rarities. I mean, I run common version of cards, I run rare versions, I, wear the, I run the lesser rare versions of some cards. You know, I don't really give two Fs, really, in honest truth, about um, how rare the card is and that. I mean, even with the white stones, I've got two shiny versions from the Kaiba Corp. Um, Kaiba Corp, where am I getting that from? The Kaiba pack, and I've also got the common version from the um, uh, Crossroads of Chaos set. So yeah, I don't really give a damn about the rarity. If it does the job I want it to do for the deck, or a certain action that I need it to do for the deck, then that's when I'll use it. And to see somebody go to such lengths to take a pair of scissors to cut cards, or burn cards, or destroy cards completely, just so somebody else can't get their hands on them, is pathetic, cowardly, and very, very selfish, if you ask me. I mean, if there's somebody else out there who wants to, who would like those cards, then, you know, trade them off or sell them off or whatever, but don't destroy them so somebody else can't get a shot at it, for goodness sake. It's pathetic, really. It just shows to me that you have no respect at all, and Please forgive me if um, if I offend anybody with this, but when people do that kind of action, to me, you, it, that screams net decker. I'm sorry, but that does because only 
Annette Decker really has that kind of attitude where, you know, oh, the deck's not winning, the deck's not doing good, I don't want anybody to have this, so I'll sell it off or I'll destroy it and get myself a new deck. No. No, that's a terrible attitude to have. And it just shocks me, really. It really does. But, as I said, there's a few duelists like Kisami who actually wants to stop this kind of thing. And he actually did. He's actually taking those cards and put them back together and he's building a deck with them, no matter how bad they are. And, as I said, I really admire that and I really applaud you, Kisami Unlimited. You know, good for you. You go ahead and I can't wait to see this Light Sworn deck of yours in action. I really can't wait to see it. And, um, yeah, and, and just a big shout out to everybody who, you know, hates that kind of attitude as well, because in Yu-Gi-Oh, you don't, they don't need it. I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh is unfortunately a money-orientated game with some of the cards now, but destroying cards just so somebody else can't get it, or get have a chance to try them out, is just wrong, really. But anyway, um, that is the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!